Once again, it's Gabe Morales with Gangsters, Cops, and Politicians. Today, we have a returning guest. Previously, he was on our show. We talked about the drug war and drug issues in Mexico and in the United States, and that was bilingual. I also interviewed him about his career. He has a very lengthy career, and I will let him explain that. We did a program about his career and some of the issues he encountered there in Mexico as far as policing and the politics involved there in Mexico, and we did that in Spanish. This one is going to be in English, so please help me welcome Guillermo Alberto Hidalgo Montes. How are you? Thanks, Gabe. It's an honor to be again with you. As you said, I'm, I have been law enforcement officer right now like 22 years. Uh, I'm just graduated from FBI National Academy in, in the right. session 284. Thank you, thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations, the, the last December. Um, I've been expert witness from the state of Arizona of gangs and organized crime. And I'm an author of, of books about gangs and about law enforcement training. All right. Very good. And so let's get right into the issues there. We read about here in the United States about the drug cartels every day. There's something, uh, a major bust. Or we hear about a cartel leader that has been arrested in Mexico, sometimes extradited to the United States. And sometimes there's some issues with that. Uh, we have uh, AMLO there as president there in, in Mexico, and he has taken a different approach. I think you would agree there in the past, there's been some issues. Some presidents have gone more aggressive against the cartels and some have, well, some have been corrupted. Let's be frank. You know better than me. The issues are down there as far as corruptions with some political officials and some police officials. We here in the United States, as you can imagine, we're not immune to those issues. We have our uh, corrupt politicians and corrupt police. We just saw that in Memphis, Tennessee. We saw some police officers beat a man senselessly when it appears it was way above the top as far as use of force. And we have also had politicians that have lied, <laughs> imagine that, lied about things and have taken bribes. And so we cannot, you know, point the figure in Mexico and say, you know, hey, you know, bad, bad, bad because it happens here too. But that is something, an issue we talked about in previous shows about as far as dealing with the drug war. But why don't we today talk about specifically what are the cartels doing down there right now and how is it impacting the Mexican citizens? And if you could, sir, what is the spillover here to the United States? What What is the cause and effect? Well, uh, the cartels, as we know, the word cartel begins from an economic approach. Cartel means an economic entity that handles a monopoly. In this case, we're talking about drugs. The first time that we heard about drug cartels was in the Reagan administration, that he was talking about the Medellin cartel in Colombia as a cartel, you know, a, a criminal enterprise, we can say. And that's the problem that we have. We pass from guys that pass drugs to the U.S. from the border in donkeys or in horses and we are seeing orientalization of different works because they are losing sometimes money with drugs and they start to moving human trafficking, guns, and things like that, piracy. So you, you have more complex organizations and they are using, as we talked the last time that I have done it to be with you, uh, gangs, uh, third parties' uh, contracts to work. And that makes points of drug killing in the communities. And it's very complex because back in the day, they pay for their jobs with money. Right now, they're paying with drugs. So, you know, a guy can't sniff a kilo of Coke in, in one party. So you have to, you want to see money. So you start selling drugs and you make points of drug dealing. And it's very, very complex. And right now, you can see with this, think that you talk about the, our president, you see the Pacific coastline, all these states are from the same party. So they have been a lot of times signed to be with deals with the drug lords. For example, it's very, very funny uh, that two days uh, before the arrival of President Biden, Ovidio uh, get arrested for the second time, it's very. It's not the first time that happens. Happens with President Fox and President Calderon, too. 
But it's a very complex thing because you can't cut the supply from drugs from, from the U.S. because you will have a very strong problem with guys that don't have the drugs. So it, it can raise the opportunity to have more crime. Understandable. And so I know we talked about this on a previous program a little bit, but I think we probably need to go over that again briefly this time. The system is different there in Mexico as far as when you get arrested. Here we have bail. Get arrested, you have bail. You then return to court. You get either charged or they drop the charges. And that prosecutor basically decides whether to move with that. And if it's a violent felony and they have probable cause and enough evidence, they usually go through nine times out of 10 on that one. And they may decide to charge later. Uh, it's a little bit different there. And we also have the speedy trial issue. So individuals get let out sometimes because they haven't had their speedy trial rights met. So there's a lot of effort to make sure that things move along and that individuals get to court and or if they don't have an attorney, they get a defense attorney appointed to them if they're indigent or they can get a private attorney. And then there's discussions a lot of times between the prosecutor and the attorneys if they want to make a plea bargain, cut things short. That happens a lot in the United States, plea bargains. So I would say actually probably the majority of the time, eventually, even if they fight it, they end up in a plea bargain. So the individual gets a much lower sentence uh, on the range or at least the low range than they would have got had they taken it to trial. They take it to trial. They roll the dice. I've seen it. Most of the time they, they don't win and they end up doing a lot more time for the same charge that somebody took a plea bargain for. So our system is not perfect, but that's in a nutshell, kind of how our system works. Can you explain for us briefly for our viewers, how does the Mexican system work when police want to arrest somebody, intend to arrest somebody, and they go to court? They don't call it bail there. They call it... Amparo. Yeah, uh, there you go. Amparo. Yeah, Amparo. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It, it... Amparo. And many people, I'm sure it has, the system has been improved. Many people are on the impression even Mexican citizens that would interview in jail a lot of times would think that the bail was uh, really a mordida. And so it, it's, it's a different system, mordida being in, in English, a bribe to, to get out. And it was obvious to me that Mexican citizens did not understand the U.S. system. And I know, even myself, I am confused on how the Mexican system works. So could you please let us know briefly how that works there? Well, actually, we have a change in, in the penal law in 19, uh, no, 2016. So we changed a lot of things. We, we have oral trials right now. Uh, and, uh, we have improved. Always, we have the, the, the figure of the bail, the fianza. And you can recover that fianza. Uh, but the problem is sometimes from reasons of ignorance, things like that, you don't ask for uh, your, your bail back. So that's, that's a problem. And the Amparo, uh, the, the trial of Amparo, it's a figure that stops in, in sometimes the, the actions of the authority. For example, right now, uh, Ovidio has a, an Amparo to, stop, to prevent to go to the U.S. But the reason it's Ovidio has that thing, that, that figure, it's a legal resource that he has. It's a right. Uh, but it doesn't mean that he won't go to the U.S. To, to be extradited. Actually, the only reason that he is not being extradited is because the U.S. authority has not asked uh, legally the extradition for a video. It's about days, just that. And that, that's, that's how it goes. The problem here is, yes, we have this change in 2016. We have... Uh, six, seven years with this, with this new uh, system. And it's very complex in, in a country like Mexico with a huge lack of training for law enforcement officers, a huge lack for training for judges. So that, that's the problem that we have. But for example, in this case with Ovidio, yes, he has his right to, to promote this Amparo trial. Uh, he has it. But it doesn't mean that he won't be extradited in the U.S. Actually, let me tell you something. It, 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 it will sound very funny, 
but we don't have any charge in Mexico for a video of any crime. So that's a problem because it's a shame that another country has to, you know, pull the strings, the political strings to, to, to make the work for the politicians in Mexico. And that's a shame because we are in, in a war uh, and the people is dying, law enforcement officers are di dying, innocent people is dying and it's very, it's, it's very sad. Well, you mentioned training. I know training is big with you. We have trained together with the International Latino Gang Investigators Association, and I have brought our friend uh, Pablo Cajigal uh, up to Seattle and other places to train also. And I uh, hope to bring you in uh, soon to you know help train people here, understand how the system works there in Mexico and the things you're dealing with. But I think it's also important that we exchange, that more of our officers go down there and learn your system. Because I think a lot of the frustration and anger, to be frankly, a lot of times is because people just don't understand. Me entiendes? So yeah. It is your system. It's your country. It's your constitution. But if people just, I think, knew there's so much misinformation and misconceptions about Mexico. Again, people, I think, are going on past stories, experiences, sometimes real, sometimes made up, rumor. And yeah. uh, if they saw for themselves firsthand, I think it would be a big help, a big educator for officers, as well as a good experience for your officers down there. Yeah, I think that's true. Uh, that's the thing that we talk with with our session classmates in, in Quantico, because they, they have a, a very wrong side about approach from Mexico. They saw Mexico like big guys with sombreros and tequilas, and then that's it's not Mexico. Last... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, revol oh revolvers. Oh, it, it, it yeah, don't, yeah. It, no sirve, no work. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or, 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 or cartoons like Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's very complex. We, we, have, we must have uh, this vote of, of confidence to exchange intelligence and data. Because, for example, you sometimes uh, let them narco free in the US and you don't say nothing to the Mexican authorities and you suddenly see the guy on the street making trouble again and, and you don't you don't have that exchange of intelligence even with the with the gang members guys that has been deported from the US to to Mexico and uh, the CBP led the guy in the in the border in Tijuana or or Juarez and uh, we we must have this exchange of intelligence because sometimes you know the CDP uh, let the gang guy, uh, the gang member in the in the border, or the cartel member in the border, and U.S. Of, uh, Mexican authority, you you don't know who is that guy. You know that has been deported, but you don't know their backgrounds. So you have, as a Mexican authority, a new problem, uh, and that's why sometimes cartels or the gang has been spread so fast, not just in Mexico, in in the whole Latin America. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, thank you for uh, helping educate us on that. Like I said, you know, we're both we're both big on training. And so hopefully <laughs> some people learn something in that conversation there. Now let's get into the cartels there. What are they up to today in general in Mexico, at least in your area? Now, uh, what state are you mostly working out of today? Well, I am work the most in the center of, of, of the country. But Central right Mexico. now, yeah, yeah. But right now we have a problem because... If you see the, the last DEA threat assessment is from the year 2022, you can see how the cartels ha has been moved. You see seven main cartels with 43 little franchises or, or, or criminal groups. And that's very complex because sometimes there are guys that are making crimes. They are not part of, of the cartel. But if you buy drug, buy guns from the cartel, you can use their name. So suddenly you see a lot of cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación, and maybe those guys aren't from the cartel, but they like franchise the name. Sorry to interrupt. So these forty-three then lesser groups, they may or may not be tied to a bigger cartel, but those groups often switch sides, do they not? They will work for another deal. Is right if they don't like the way one leader does business. They may go change with somebody else. That seems to happen a lot, doesn't it? 
Yeah, that's true. Actually, the name is asociaciones por conveniencia, like convenient associations that you can work with a different cartel if, if you need it or make familiar bounds. For example, remember that the, the wife of the Chapo Guzman was niece from Nacho Coronel. So you make that, that bond, you know, it's like we, we care each other. It's, it's very complex. And uh, the problem that we have, it's you can see the, the perfect example with the Sinaloa cartel. Yes, you have the Chapitos with Ovidio and his brothers. You see Aureliano Guzman, the Chapo's brother, fighting with their family. And in the, in the other part of the cartel, you can see Mario Zambada. So there are guys or, or, or three different entities fighting for the cartel uh, power. And it's very, very complex. Uh, and we that's why we must a different approach for this kind of problem. Follow the money, uh, things like that. Not, not necessary use of force. In some cases, it's a fact that you will use guns and, and, and things like that. But you must be very careful in how you uh, freeze those assets. And because, you know, the blood that gives organized crime identity, the power of doing things, that, that blood is money. So if you freeze the money, you freeze the, 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 the body, the whole body. Interesting. Now, I know you also had a El Cholo that had uh, turned on El Mencho. Cartel yeah. Jalisco Nueva Generación. So... It seems like, too, not only do you have the main cartels and the 43 lesser groups, criminal organizations, but then, as you said, you had uh, Sinaloa cartel is a good example. The Beltran Leva brothers broke off, right? So from the Sinaloa, and then you had, uh, it seems like the split between uh, Mayo and Chapitos. You had uh, Cholo split up from Bencho, and we know how that turned out. So it seems very complicated. It must be even hard for you down there in Mexico even to keep track. Yes, it's complicated. And I'm going to pull over from this from the side of the law enforcement officers want to talk about politics. It's very awesome how you have a lot of power from the military right now in Mexico. You, the, the law enforcement officers, uh, you are the founding uh, law enforcement agencies to feed this huge monster that is La Guardia Nacional from, from the president, that, that I, our guys from the army, you have tanks, uh, choppers, planes, and you can hit those guys with precision to take, them, uh, take out from the streets. It's very, I don't know, it's about politics. Wow, interesting. Check this out. Remember that three weeks ago, a congressist, uh, Dan Crenshaw and Michael Waltz asked for Biden to name the drug cartels as uh, terrorist groups. And a few days ago, 70-something local attorneys asked for the same thing. So in, in a huge, in, in the worst case scenario, you can use the Patriot Act and the Freedom Act to have a, an, a regular force an army force in Mexico from the U.S. So it's it's very complex. So right now, the, the, the message for Mexico as a country is if you don't fix your problem, because, you know, we have we are neighbors as the, as the biggest country in the world. You can't allow have the, those kinds of, of problems in your southern border. So, like I said, we get a lot of information here and sometimes it's, you know, <laughs> it's hard to sort out. Uh, the truth from uh, what is not the truth as far as uh, the, the news here, the news media here. News media here is very biased. It's very political. Either CNN is more Democrat, Fox is more Republican. Rare now to get unbiased news here. News media there, how unbiased do you feel it is there? Are they scared? Because we hear a lot about the drug cartels taking out journalists. I remember they're in in Tijuana, Blancornelas. Being, Jesus Blancornelas. Right. Who did a great job for the Zeta media there in Tijuana, exposing the ties with California Mexican Mafia and the uh, Ariano Felix organization, the Tijuana cartel. 
and he was targeted several times because of that. And we have heard of journalists being killed down there that get the story right, <laughs> evidently, uh, that maybe uh, the cartels feel threatened by what they're reporting. So what do you feel is the state of the media relations today there? The, the, the journalists right now are scared because this uh, uh, huge violence against the group. Uh, actually, Mexico is the first uh, country in journalist killings without an open war. So the media right now, it's scared, but the people it's turning their faces to uh, different kind of medias as YouTube, uh, 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 non-regular media, because they have a lot of bias about who is paying the media, the government or the guys against the government. So it's, it's, it's just like you say, the CNN and Fox, it's the same here, but looking for different kind of, of, of information, that's, that's a good thing. But as you know, Mexico, we have a lot of, of, of communities that even don't have cell phones or, or, or internet, and it's very uh, hard to, to reach those communities. We get Telemundo here. <laughs> it seems to be the big one. Yeah. Here in the United States. <laughs> so we can believe Telemundo for the most part, huh? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. I know some, uh, I have some actually some reporter friends that work with uh, Telemundo and La Opinion, uh, which La is Opinion. the Los Angeles Times, a Spanish edition. And I, I know I have a lot of good uh, reporter friends from the U.S. side and from uh, the Latin American side. So, yeah, very important job they do. And I really respect those that keep it unbiased because I know they get a lot of pressure from their from their editors sometimes to uh, go one way or another. So uh, that's that's a tough job, too. Yes. And, I, and, you know, for example, here in Mexico, the journalists that expose a criminal bounds with, with the politicians and the cartels, or, or even in this case of Garcia Luna with top law enforcement uh, officers, it's it's tough. It's a it's a tough job, and it's a shame that they are targeting the, the journalists in Mexico. Is there anything you know, else you'd like to tell our viewers today about the state of Mexico in regards to the drug cartels? Well, we we have tough times right now, all about politicians and politics. Uh, but we are fighting as law enforcement officers. We are we are fighting in Mexico uh, because a few bad guys can't against good people. So we need help. We need intelligence, and we need a lot of support because we are not talking about two different countries. We are talking about the same region, and the things that affect the U.S. obviously affect Mexico and. The things that affect Mexico can affect uh, the U.S. So we, we must see us uh, like like neighbors, like brothers, and try to make our part, you, your part in, in the U.S. And, and, and ours are part. And it's very difficult, as I told you before, that the U.S. pull the, the strings to the Mexican authorities to make their work. It's very sad. Well, thank you for speaking with us today. Really appreciate you taking out time in your busy day and staying in contact with me all these years. And like I said, let's get together here, do a training here in the United States, okay? With a pleasure, Gabe. It's a pleasure right. to be here. Thank you, you, amigo. Okay. Take care. Adios. Bye. Bye.